Hey, this is Austin from TurboLab, and this video I'm going to show you how to rebuild a Ford 6.0 uh, GT37 BAS Turbo. This is the rebuild kit that we sell. I will link to it below. So the first thing that you want to do is take the compressor plate, and you're going to take the piston ring seal in and push that inside here to make sure that there's a very minimal gap and that there's no wear there. And that's what that looks like. The next thing you want to do is check the bearing housing for scarring. And if it's too scarred up, then you probably just need to buy another turbo. And then after that, you're going to take the rear seal and you're going to put that in the back here to make sure that there's minimal gap. Okay, once you identify that your turbo is rebuildable, you can go ahead and start with the rebuild. And you're going to go ahead and put this here. That's the thrust collar. And then the thrust bearing oil holes go down. Then add some oil on top. You're going to grab this piece and install the seal like this. and then add some oil under the seal now you can take the seal and put it inside of the plate but first you want to make sure you add some oil Make sure it spins. Add some oil to the back of this. So first you're going to put this thing in. And these seals right here are a special nylon seal. So if you break those, just you probably have to go to Ford to find something like that. And the gear part is going to go up towards the oil feed. So basically what you're trying to do here is to get that arm to catch the first gear. So make sure the arm catches the first gear. You can adjust this arm or move this arm from the other side. So, you can see that I caught the first gear and I'm pushing it in. And where I'm adjusting it is here to make sure it goes in the way I want it. Then, you could take this piece and push that in the back side. Just make sure you squirt plenty of oil down in there. And the main reason why I had that bolt in there was for the removal process. And this uses a bigger o-ring, which we use our pliers to install and take out. Now I'll make sure that you have this one installed. So install this piece back on here. Make sure you put oil inside of it. And don't forget the seat clip.
Now you can put your plate on. If you want to, you can put Loctite on these. These actually never came with Loctite from the factory. Okay, now you got the shaft and you need to put it inside the bearing housing. But first, before you do that, you need to put the, well actually, you need to put the seal on the shaft. And to do that, it's really simple, but people seem to mess it up a lot. Sometimes these are a little more tricky. Now you can insert the drill bearings. One thing to keep in mind with the Power Stroke 6.0 is that there's three different types that have three different sets of bearings and three different spacers to match. So as long as you have the correct set of these three parts then you could assemble the turbo and it could be any three of the set some of them have narrower bearings with a, a longer spacer and then there's one that's kind of in between sizes and then there's one with wider bearings so now to install this it's really not that difficult don't forget to put oil on the bearings and some oil in here. <clears throat> also one thing to remind you is make sure you take that groove right there and run a pick through it to clean all the carbon out of it. Then you just spin and push. Also, this shaft right here is the 2003 10 blade. We also do sell this shaft. So, for this turbo, it's an upgrade, so I have to machine the exhaust housing. Okay, so you could put a little bit of Loctite here if you want before installing the compressor wheel, but you don't have to. I really don't like to put too much because they never had it from factory on the compressor nut. And it is left hand thread so you don't have to worry about it coming off as much. And then you're going to add a fourth turn once you got it snug. Once you're happy with the tightness, then you can uh, put the compressor housing on. For this one, uh, the Ian's machining the compressor housing right now, and I gotta go machine the exhaust housing. And don't forget your compressor housing o ring right here. So, after all that, uh, please leave any comments or questions that you might have about this rebuild. 
And also, don't forget to clean up the VGT system really well. That's one of the main reasons why these servos have problems in the first place, is because the high sulfur diesel oil and diesel fuel will uh, clog up the VGT system. So, uh, if you have access to a sand blaster, don't blast the bearing housing, but make sure you blast the exhaust housing and all the VGT components really well. And make sure this arm isn't worn either, because if that's worn, you probably should replace the whole bearing housing to replace that. Thanks for watching, and I'll leave the uh, link to the rebuild kit below this video if you want to go buy it. It's the only kit that we use and recommend because uh, the, the brass thrust bearing holds up a lot better than the factory one. So here's what the result looks like after machining the compressor housing for the 63 and a half by... So in order to do this, you have to line up the uh, components properly and make sure you clean these really well. If it's sticking now, it's going to be sticking even worse when you put it on the truck. Uh, just clean out all the oxidation on the parts and any debris. I, I used a sandblaster. It worked really well. And make sure you clean in here really well. I blasted this and went back and painted it to make sure that the cartridge sits properly on this. Do the same thing with this area on the bearing housing. Now for this, you have to make sure that you notice where the dowel pin is and you notice where this uh, location is for the arm to rotate the variable vane. There's going to be a sweet spot where this is going to connect so you're just going to have to keep putting it on and off until you find this spot where you'll just rotate it and it'll go right in properly. And just tighten down the the uh, V band clamp. So here's the finished product. And you can see what it looks like after the machine work on the turbine. Another thing to keep in mind is make sure you blast this area where that seals on the exhaust because if you don't then it could have a really bad exhaust leak or it could not fit up right because the rust expands and it may not fit back on the same way it came off. 